So once again, good morning, everyone. Thanks again for being here. I truly, truly appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Um, I want to talk about a strategy that we've been talking about a lot in right way options here recently. And I've been kind of, well, I don't want to say I'm harping on it, but I've been sticking to the subject matter here for a while. And the reason is, is because we're seeing so many traders see positive results from this strategy. It's a very, very simple strategy to learn. It's, it's easy to understand. I've used it for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, um, there was a, a person that I taught years ago that um, had lost um, considerable amount of money, lost uh, their account was only $8,700. And using this strategy and pretty much this strategy alone in nine months grew that account back to a $25,000 level trading this strategy. And now that person averages somewhere around two to $300,000 a year trading this strategy so it does work it does take a little bit of time to learn it takes practice it takes some dedication to it and we have um if you've got an echo bianca you may just have to re just click that red x and up in the upper right hand corner reboot into the room So what what we um, what we've seen here lately, and I've been I've been talking a lot about this in coaching. I do an awful lot of individual coaching with folks from all over the place, and we're seeing really great results um, when they dive in to a very simple plan um, in this three eight trap. So let's get into that, and I'm going to do a quick overview of the three eight trap. I don't want to spend a ton of time. Um, on that, but I wanted to get into some of the questions, um, some of the questions that people might have about the three eight trap. Maybe looking at how we set up entries and how we set up stop losses and things like that in the three eight trap. So let's jump into some charts now. I've got my chart just set up here with um, only the three exponential moving average and the eight exponential moving average. And the reason I've done that is I want to show the simplicity of, of trading this strategy. If you just simply put these two moving averages on a chart, and honestly any two moving averages that have opposing time frames, and flip through a bunch of charts, you're going to see, man, if I would have just followed, just followed that simple trending pattern, there would have been considerable money to have been made in the market because it's it repeats it's it's the most common pattern in the world um, when it comes to trading in that when we start trending we move up we pull back we move up we pull back um, we've all heard it as um, peak and valley patterns but that's a, the common the most common price action in the market well the 3-8 trap is really designed to kind of pick that up and help us get into the low risk entry places in the chart so let me describe the strategy here really quick using xlu just for a second now when we have the three underneath the eight obviously that is on the wrong side of the market we're that's a short trade setup. If we're underneath, if the three is crossed down through the eight, we're in a short setup. But I want to emphasize this very clearly. This is not a crossover strategy. A lot of times when people look at moving averages, they think that what they're searching for is the crossover. That is not what we're looking for. Okay, the crossover just tells us when that occurs that we are finally in a position that we're on the right side of the market here. So we get a crossover, but we don't chase that trade. We don't rush into that position. My rules on this are very, very simple, and but at the same time, they're really strict. In the sense, when I trade the 3 eight trap, I wanna see that three crossing above the eight, and then I wait for the pullback. I wait for that pullback for the three pulls back toward the eight and stays above the eight. Stays above the eight. Right here, 
we have a 3-8 cross down and a 3-8 cross back up. There is no trade there. Okay, we're waiting for those pullbacks where the three stays above the eight. Those nice, clean potential points where we can find clear entries into the trade. Okay. Now, I also want to emphasize that it's the same strategy if we're looking for a downside move. If we're looking for a downside move, we're not, or, or a short trade, we're not looking for the crossover. We're waiting for that rally back to the eight. Close in there, we're gonna look for that failure pattern to get a short. Okay, so this is not a crossover strategy. Also, the three eight trap is also, the, the, the moving averages are also not the trade signal. Okay, they're not the trade signal. The signal is generated by the price action. But the reason I wanted to show it to you like this with nothing else on, no price, no nothing, is to show you that if you flip through a bunch of charts, and I would really challenge everyone to do this, just set up a white background chart, two moving averages, three exponential, eight moving average, and just flip through your watch list and look for all of those trending trades that you could have maybe taken advantage of. But we get so overwhelmed with too many indicators and too many things, we never see the trade. Okay. Now for some of you, some folks like this, some folks don't. I have a 17 EMA on here that I will turn on. The purpose of the 17 EMA is to help us see trend. We always want to see our moving averages following a trend, whether it be up or down. It's very clear with this moving average that if we are above, our moving averages are above that 17, we are in an uptrend. If we're below our 17, we are in a downtrend. And so we're trying to find a way to just really simplify this strategy. The other thing that you can always watch for when you use three moving averages like this is you can look for these places where we get all of the averages coming together. Those will typically be high probability trade points. They call it a, a moving average squeeze. We still have to wait for the price action signal to enter the trade. But when we see these areas where we tighten up like this, those are high probability trade situations. So imagine this right up here, what we just talked about, that this is not a trade. It's not a trade yet. Imagine this stock pulling back like this, pushing back up and then resting right in here. We're gonna have a, an accumulation of those averages right in this area and then that possibility for that buy signal to occur to send that stock even higher in XLU, okay? So it's a pattern that's very, very simple to identify, very, very easy to read. It works just as well in any short strategy. Okay. <clears throat> so what we've been showing in this is just this real simple setup. We take the price action, put that on the chart, and we focus on the entry signals that are generated around this area. Now I trade basically two patterns in the market. And almost all of my trades are two patterns. First, the stock must be trending, either trending up or trending down. Second, the stock must either consolidate over toward the trend. I call these consolidations, little pop out of the box patterns. We get this nice little tight consolidation and I'm looking for the entry signal. I'm waiting for the entry signal. And folks in RWO see me do this all the time. I just set a price alert on the chart. It's, I mean, it really is that simple. I see that setup coming and I decide to set a price alert on that chart. If the stock pops above here to let me know. To follow those trades. So in this chart right here, if you are a a swing trader. This chart right here gives us one beautiful entry signal, a second possibility right here, 
I don't consider any of this in here very clean for a potential setup into the trade. This right here is not a clean setup. There's the next trade. And there's a possible trade right there. Okay. Multiple trade entries, all of those coming out as winners. They may not be great grand winners, but all of them are winners overall. And you're going to see this pattern repeat over and over and over in charts. It's so simple and easy to use. Now, here's the thing that always seems to get in the way of folks. We overanalyze. <clears throat> the first thing I, 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 I can tell you, I would get this question if I were talking to somebody about this. Okay, but isn't this a Morningstar pattern? Shouldn't I buy this Morningstar pattern right here? Hey, if that fits your trading guidelines and your trading rules, do it. I'm following the 3-8 strategy, okay? And the 3-8 strategy requires that once we cross back above, we have that resting pullback. We have that rest that holds above that 8, and then I look for the entry. Now let me talk to you why that is the case. See, when I take this trade over here, and I enter this position here, my stop loss is very close, right underneath that area. If I chase this trade here, my stop loss is underneath here, I've taken more risk in the trade, right? Considerably more risk in the trade. If I wait for the higher probability, the lower risk entry points, I take less risk in the trade, stop losses are close, and I don't have to risk that much capital in every position. Does that make sense, guys? So when you see those big swinging moves, it's wise to kind of stay away from those big swinging moves because anytime we get that massive whip in the market, there's more risk in the trade. Okay. Now I want to show you that this works on any time frame, any time frame at all. Yesterday during right way options, uh, the, as you guys know, <clears throat> swing trading has been very, very challenging here recently because we've had so much back and forth whip in the market. We get one day up and then one day down and one day up and one day down and then we whip really big and then we're we reverse it overnight the next day so it's been very very challenging what i've been showing folks in right way options is you can trade this strategy on any time frame so yesterday we got into a trade using a 15 minute chart on the diamonds and i did it live in front of everyone we entered a trade right in here, and I just automatically put in a profit of 10%. I had a closing order at a 10% profit. And we just kept adjusting the stop loss as necessary throughout the session on Friday. And sometime right over here, I got clipped out at my 10% profit, and I was done with that trade. Now I didn't have to I didn't have to do that, but I did it as a demonstration as if you put in a profit target into a trade and that's one of the things I've also been harping on a lot particularly in this really crummy whippy market. <clears throat> a lot of folks in here listening right now and a lot of folks from Dallas Fort Worth will probably say or agree with this that I've been in profitable trades over the last few days. But then they quickly turn and go the other direction. They end up taking a loss. Now, one of the reasons that is, is we don't have any goals in our trade. We haven't recognized that the market has shifted. The market has changed to a very quick back and forth market. So we haven't made that recognition that we need to be thinking about some planning, some targets in our trade. Now, I traded this with the folks in right way options. I just bought a single contract. So there wasn't a whole lot I could do with this as far as scaling or anything like that. I just took the price of the option. So I just took here, I took the price of the option. Um, I added 10% to it. And that was my closing order up here. That was it. Just close the order. 
So let me ask you guys, how many of you guys are going to go broke if you take 10, 15, 20% profits consistently? We've got folks that have taken this strategy, brand new traders, relatively brand new traders, brand new to this strategy for sure, used it on an hourly chart. I've got one client now the la uh, in 20 trades had 18 wins. One client did a 30 minute test on this, ran this out, did 144 trades in two weeks, 66% were winners, 10% were break even. Some of that break even could have been, uh, they could have had better results. Um, what was happening is they were tightening their stop up to break even too quickly and ended up stopping themselves out. So this pattern works on every single time frame, and we see this over and over and over during the day. Yesterday, during first thing in the morning, right way options, um, I told everyone about DLTR, Dollar Tree. It was popping up in our LTA scanner. Does everyone see the 3-8 trap set up here? Simple trade, simple setup. This is a 15 minute chart. But money came into that trade really, really quickly. Folks made nice money on some of these trades. And we have folks that have been using this strategy. In fact, Greg here. Greg, could you tell us your success using the 3 8 and just trading Coca Cola? Just give the folks a little bit of flavor of what's been going on here for folks that in this really choppy market, they've been able to pull money out using the 3-8 trap on the short-term strategy. Now, I want to be really, really clear on this. This works in any time frame. Every single time frame. If we take a weekly chart and look for the 3-8 trap, it will provide those entry signals that you're looking for. It will provide short trades. And it will do it over and over and over. Okay. Um, no, Al, I was showing a 15 minute chart. We couldn't have bought at the end of day. It was first thing in the morning yesterday when we opened up right way options. I said, hey guys, Dollar Tree is popping up. Okay. So it was a 15 minute trade. It was a 15 minute chart that they were following. So no, it was buying pretty close to the beginning of the day on that pattern. And you can see that pattern showing up in a lot of charts yesterday. And that's where, you know, the, the diamonds trade on the 15 minute was, a, was an intraday trade. Picking it up right here. So what we want to do is we want to look for this pattern setting up and wait for the entry. Now let's talk about the entries and exits. Okay, I get this question a lot on the trade. Now, you guys have seen me talk about, in fact, if it, by the way, I can't teach every single detail of this this morning. Probably nobody wants to stick around that long. But if you want more information on this, I'm going to ask you guys to go to my YouTube channel. On, on the YouTube channel, I have several videos on this subject, okay? You can get plenty of free trading or training on this strategy and even a full strategy video on how to utilize Heiken Ashi to um, utilize this same type of trade, okay? So there's lots of good information over there and lots of detail on entries, exits. It's going to require some work on your part. You're going to have to watch some videos. But that's the part of the studying of this. Now, here's what here's what I want people to do. Is if you believe this strategy can work for you, if you think this strategy might have some help, it's a very simple strategy. 
may help you, I challenge you to write yourself a trading plan. You know, one of the things that we, we do so much as traders is we give lip service to the idea that we're planning when we're really not. I'll give you a great example. I have one coaching customer that had a really great success with the 3A trap, was winning about 65% of the trades. Okay. <clears throat> so we started studying. I wanted to only look at the losing trades. Let's look at the losing trades. What were the losing trades? It was interesting that every single one of the losing trades Every one that this person had taken was when they chased the crossover. They didn't wait. They chased the crossover. They didn't wait for the pullback. So they chased the crossover, got stopped out, and then the stock went ahead and went on up. They chased the crossover. Okay? So you have to have a set of rules, a plan that you're going to follow and be disciplined to this plan. Okay, anybody can trade this. It doesn't require, it doesn't require, um, you know, a great big long plan. You could write this down on a half a sheet of paper, but you have to be disciplined to that plan. This is what I'm going to do. Now, if you think about this for a while, if you follow this same pattern over and over and over, you get really good at finding it. It's really easy. You don't have to look at every stock. In fact, I, I tell people, if you wanna do the intraday trading type stuff, don't be chasing the flavor of the day. Pick a list, five, six, seven stocks, and just follow them. Stocks that are moving, don't look at any other stocks. Just wait for the trades in those that are moving. When the market starts to improve and we get back to a better swing trade market, we're going to find stocks that do great with the 3A trap, okay, for longer positions. So I'm going to go to a daily chart here on MasterCard, and you can see the 3A traps that set up throughout this chart. Very simple 3A trap entries. Not there, right there, right there, not here, right in here, right in here, and just following these swing trades up. Profitable trades as the strategy continues to produce signals over and over and over. Okay, had you traded this on a longer term chart, a weekly chart, you see the beautiful 3-8 trap right here? Beautiful 3-8 trap right here. Beautiful 3-8 trap right here. All winning trades. Just following this simple strategy, but you have to be dedicated to the strategy, okay? Now I get the question all the time, how do you find this? I'll tell you what I do. I don't run any, I use TC2000 as you guys see, and I highly recommend TC2000 for charting, but I don't run scans in TC2000 anymore. I run what we call the LTA scanner, the live trading alert scanner. You guys can ask them questions about it if you want it. Ed's here. Um, Ed, Ed is the designer of the LTA scanner. Uh, brilliant guy to tell you the truth. And he's got a beautiful, scanner that runs automatically so i just have a a an automatic scan that runs on on an hourly chart a four hour chart a daily chart a weekly chart for the 3 scan and it runs them automatically i don't have to run them it just brings me the trades okay so if you guys have some interest in that ask some questions um, ed can provide you a link on this if you're if you're interested Oh, thank you, Steve. So when you look at this, this pattern and this strategy, it's really important that we define a set of rules. What are you going to do in trading this strategy? How are you going to define that set of rules? Well, for me, it's very simple. I'm very strict on a set of rules. Very strict. I will not trade the crossover, period. Explanation point, I won't trade the crossover. I'll wait for the crossover to occur and then wait for the entry right in here. Okay, whoops. 
wrong tool. So I'm going to wait for that crossover, wait for that entry in here where I get a low risk entry into the trade. And the fun thing about this is, is I can actually define this trade before it ever happens. Because I can see this occurring. I'm just going to, I'm using this because it's a great example. I'm going to use this as if it was a daily chart. Okay. If I see this trade setting up, I'm just going to place alerts on the chart and wait for the trade to come to me. Literally, I do that. The folks in Right Way Options see me do that all the time. I wait for the trade. The reason I found Dollar Tree early in the morning is because I had Dollar Tree. Where's my alert? I don't know which drawing. There it is. There's my alert, that pink line. I set my alert and made the trade come to me. That's how I caught Dollar Tree first thing yesterday morning. Is I place an alert on the chart and say, hey, all I had to do is look at this chart. We break out above all this resistance. We consolidate and hold here. And now we try to pull it all back and we hammer a couple of days in here. And I just said, you know, if that pops up through there, let me know. There's a winning trade. So it's not too difficult to um, to follow along if we follow along with the trading uh, pattern, the trading style that you want to trade um, overall in the chart. The, the patterns are there. We just have to watch for them carefully. OK. They come into play. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say, let's look at this strategy. This We took this trade directly, okay? I get this question, well, when the signal, do I wait for the signal to pass? Do I, what do I do here? Well, this is a 15 minute chart. We couldn't wait for the single signal to pass. But even if this was a, a, a daily chart, I place an alert on this chart and I wait for that trade. Now you could choose to place an alert across right through here. I connected these four candles with that alert, trying to catch this pop through. You could choose to say, I, and this is something that everyone has to deal with, that I want this to break there. Now I'll tell you that can be okay on a 15 minute or a short term chart, but it may not be okay on a longer term chart like a daily, because what may happen here is your risk has just grown by waiting for that trade too long. One of the things that is really important to any strategy guys is you need to know what your tolerance is to risk. Okay, and what I mean by that is you need to know the dollar amount you're willing to risk on a trade, not a percentage. I get that question all the time. Well, what's the percentage you use? I don't use a percentage. A percentage loss on a $300 stock is really different than a percentage stock uh, that's 25 bucks. I need a dollar amount. I have to pay my bills in dollars, not percentages. I need to know how much I'm risking on a trade. Okay. Um, RC, I thought I just explained that. When I place an alert, if the, if the candle produces that alert and I'm prepared for this trade, I enter that position. Because the sooner I can enter that position, the less risk I take on the trade to my stop loss. I don't necessarily wait for a candle to finish. You can choose to do that if you want to. Just remember, we've seen this a lot lately, right? This candle that produces that entry turns into being a candle that looks like that. And now you've just increased the risk on your trade dramatically and you may have to pass on that position. Okay, so think about that. You want to consider the con condition of the market, how confident you are in the current trend or the current market in making that trade decision. Okay. 
But you'll have to think about this when you're planning your risk. You must know how many dollars you're putting at risk. Because if you don't know what your risk tolerance is, you will always be emotional. If you don't know how much you've risked in the trade, you will always be emotional. And that breeds micromanagement. Anybody in here admit that they have a problem with micromanaging? They get into a trade and then they sit there and stare at that chart wiggling around. They can't do anything else. They watch that chart just wiggle up and down and wiggle up and down and wiggle up and down. And it builds pressure on you emotionally. I don't do that. As a matter of fact, right way options folks have seen me do this. When the stock moves up, if I'm up 15, 20%, I often set a trailing stop loss and I'm done looking at that chart. Done. I'm looking for my next trade because I'm wasting time if I'm trying to micromanage this one. I don't know what comes next. All I can do is set a good quality trade and let the trade try and play out. Okay. I also get this comment a lot because I set this trade for a 10% profit and then walked away. Okay, didn't, didn't try to micromanage the exit either. And I get this question all the time. And you'll hear this from me all the time. I sell when the stock is moving up or moving down if I'm in a short trade. I sell into strength. I take that guaranteed profit and I don't look back and beat myself up. Oh gosh, if I had to just tweak this and micromanage this and stared at this thing all day, I might've been able to squeeze a few dollars more out of it. I don't do that. Because I'll ask you guys this question. If you have a 10% goal on every trade, can you go broke making 10%? Greg here mentioned that he had one of his best days ever, taking 10% profits, trading 15-minute charts on Coca-Cola the other day. Stock would move up, he'd take his profit. Wait for the next entry. Stock would move up, he'd take his profit. Wait for the next entry. And, and by the way, it doesn't have to be 10. You guys could say, hey, I want to shoot for 15 or whatever. Right now, this market is so, the price action is so crummy, insipid, that, you know, go shooting for that little smaller profit target may be the wise thing to do on these trades. But you can certainly, if you take, imagine taking this trade with um, three contracts. I just traded this with one. Take three contracts into this trade, sell two here, and then trail the third. Okay, so you can use this strategy to to um, move move in and out. But if you don't know what your tolerance to risk is, you're always going to be an emotional mess in a chart. If you don't know how much risk you're taking, you will be emotional in the trade and you'll micromanage that position to death. And we've all done this, right? We have all done this. We've all seen that stock or trade where we've been up several hundred dollars, but we want more and we turn that trade into a loss. Or we end up accepting a far less profit because we just weren't willing to pull the trigger to close that trade at that nice profit. Okay, and particularly in this market, that's important. Back in 2017, it really didn't matter, right? 2017, everything was going up. You could make bad decisions. You could, you could do stupid things and still make money. You can't do that today. You have to be wiser and adapt to the current market condition. You have to be quicker. You have to be on top of these trades. This market does not reward mistakes. 2017, you could make mistakes like crazy and make lots of money. 
This market does not reward those mistakes. We have to trade as a professional. Okay, so does that make sense, guys? Now, really quickly, I'm gonna use this. Um, I, I use um, Thinkorswim. You guys know Thinkorswim has just recently gone to zero, zero commissions. Um, on their trades. I also use a company called Tradehawk. As a matter of fact, I trade mostly through Tradehawk anymore. But um, I, in Thinkorswim, I use conditional orders. And I know a lot of folks here use Thinkorswim. I use these conditional orders. So for example, uh, on this trade yesterday, I literally took the price of the option that I paid for it, added 10% to it, set a OCO order, OCO, order cancels order. I can't write with this thing. Set an OCO order. The order was to exit the trade at a limit price of my 10% gain. Okay. The stop loss was to sell the option on a conditioned order on the price action of the chart. So initially entering that trade, my stop loss was down here someplace. And as that trade progressed, I moved that stop loss up based on the price of the chart, not the price of the option. That's how I was successfully able to set through this consolidation and still make that trade because I went based on the price action of the chart. If you go based on the price action of the option, we were up in this trade, you know, like seven, eight percent right here. But during the consolidation, that resting period, we were only up like two percent on the trade. And the reason is, is because the volatility of this market starts to shrink when we go into consolidation. The market makers spread out the bid ass spread. Okay. So we have to adapt to the price action of the chart, not the price of the option. To follow a trade like that okay so it's an oco order order counselors order there's my target my stop loss is a is a conditional order based on the price of the stock itself and then i just every once in a while look at it and adjust it as necessary <laughs> isn't that the truth <laughs> steve <laughs> For a short-term chart like this, I actually looked at the contract that was expiring um, yesterday, but I chose not to tr take it. The gamma was just too high on it, and I wanted, I, I, I didn't want as much, you know, because of the whip of the market, I didn't want that much gamma in it. So I went out to the options that were seven days to expiration. Okay, and that was just for this 15 minute trade. So it's a short term trade. I'm planning to be out. I'm not holding this for any long period of time, but I wanted a little bit less gamma that was on the option that was gonna close yesterday and less theta decay as well. Because during this right in here on that option that's going to expire at the end of the day, the theta decay in here would have been huge in that position. So. Um, having that option that had seven days to expiration made a little bit more sense. Now, typically on swing trading for the rules, guys, the way I trade these uh, for the rules is, and I think this is very important. You guys can take it for what you want, but I've done this for years. It's how I've built my options career in this, is if I'm taking a standard swing trade, it's a minimum of 60 days to expiration that I'm looking for on those options. Okay, minimum of 60 days. And the reason is if I get that one swing trade that really does well, or that swing trade that pops up, how many of you guys have had this? Catch that swing trade, it pops up and then it goes nowhere for about a week and a half. If I have too short of option time frame on it, I have to close this trade because of theta decay and I lose money. But by giving myself 60 days, I give myself a little more opportunity to be right on the trade. Okay, 
So I give myself that chance to be right by having enough time, and then I can usually close this trade before I get into that heavy theta decay in those 30 days to expiration. Okay, I always buy options, even on this one here, guys, even on that 15 minute trade, I always buy the option in the money somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. Always. The right way options folks can follow that like clockwork. They know when I talk about a trade, I'm going to be looking at an option somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. And I'm going to require some, you know, good open interest in that trade. Not volume, but open interest. Always going to be in here. And the reason I do that, people will ask me this question, well, you know, the, the 70 delta option is, is $4. The 50 delta option, I can buy that for $1.75. Why, why shouldn't I take the $1.75? Well, here's my answer. If I'm doing the technical analysis on the chart, if I truly believe that this is my setup, this is my trade, if the stock moves up a dollar, I want 70 cents for it. I don't want 50 cents. I want more money for my, my work, my trade. That's one of the reasons that I'm always looking in that 70 to 80 delta. Secondly, if I'm wrong and the stock falls, turns around and comes back down, this is still in the money. I have less gamma exposure on this one, so that move down costs me less money than it does here. The gamma exposure on this one, if that one reverses, is immediate and it's brutal. You also have higher theta decay at the money or out of the money that you do on the in the money option. So that 70 to 80 deltas is kind of the sweet spot for me in my trade. I'm always there. And even on this trade, I bought a 70s plus delta option on this. Had I bought a 50 delta option, I may not have been able to make this profit work out because of the theta decay and the gamma exposure right through there. Okay. Uh, Mike, yes, I was. As a matter of fact, I made all the option mistakes I could make. I followed around a bunch of folks that, um, you know, acted like they were kings of the world. We've all seen those, right? Those folks that put out emails all the time that they make 20, they, you know, this quarter they've had 100 and, or I mean 20, 120 percent profit trades and you join their service, you follow along, and what you find out is, yeah, they probably had that many trades, but they lost 70% of their trades to get that. I don't want to play that game. I'm not here to get rich quick. I'm not here to gamble. I'm here to make good, steady growth in my, in my um, accounts. I don't need to be a hero. I just need steady consistency. And, you know, that's what's the cool thing about this 3A trap is it provides you that consistency. Okay. Provides you that consistency. If you, um, in my um, uh, right way options, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. This is someone that's just been watching my videos on YouTube and is reporting to me yesterday what they had done. They started trading the 3 8 trap strategy from the videos that I've been posting. Okay, had eight trades in September, closed four by the end of September, they were 100% winners. The balance of the four trades were closed October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Three were winners, one was a loss. Oh, one was a break even. Sorry, one was a break even. Now that's consistent trading. 
That's following a simple plan and making it work. Okay. If you um, have a small account, I, I get this question all the time. I coach with a lot of people that have smaller accounts. And I tell them, you know, start shooting for $50, $75 profits. And they will literally tell me, I don't want to trade for $25, $50. Bucks. Well, take that $5,000 account and add $50 to it four times a week and see what happens at the end of the year on that account. It's about consistency. It's not about hitting real home runs. We want to have that consistency in our trading. And that means those good, consistent, very simple to see and understand trades that we can enter into. Okay, so do you guys have do you guys have any questions on this strategy? It's actually very simple. If you don't, I'm, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you um, a, the same strategy using Hike and Ashy. And some some folks really like Hike and Ashy. And I've I've got a strategy video, complete strategy video using Hike and Ashy. The math changes a little bit in the moving averages because of the Hike and Ashy candles. But the strategy is the same. Well, look at this chart here. This is a standard diamonds chart. Okay. There's the pattern right in here. I'm going to go to the Hike and Ashy, same time period. Here's the Hike and Ashy. And by the way, I put the volatility stop on here. But I want you to see if you have trouble managing trades, if you have trouble um, with micromanagement, you might want to take a look at Hike and Ashy. And the reason it is, I've got a lot of folks now that will enter a trade based on the standard chart. And once they're in the trade, they switch to the Hike and Ashy to manage. Because the Hike and Ashy smooths out that price move and helps you stay in that trade. The only difference is here to the 3A trap to make this work. Um, it can, about this almost identically to the three eight trap is you've got to change your moving averages to a two and a six. The two and the six for the math works better for the hike and ashy. No, on the volatility stop for the hike and ashy, I've changed that as well. For anyone, it's a ten period, one point three five, and that works just a little bit better. For the hike and ashy math. Now I want to tell you I've been talking with Ed and he's working on creating hike and ashy scans for the 3.8 in the LTA scanner. We, we've got to wait a little bit for some upgrades and things because the math to scan for the Hike and Ashy is substantial. It could bog the servers down. So we're waiting on that for some upgrades and things that have to be done. But um, Ed is working on that and we may be seeing some of those in the future. By the way, there are some Hike and Ashy scans already in the LTA scanner, but we haven't been able to um, put out everything that we want on that just yet. But notice, here's that same trap trade, and we're just using the 2 and the 6 here, looking for that entry. The fun thing about the Hike and Ashy is when you're in a strong trend, I want you to notice that there's no tails on these candles. Until we get up here, this is called a transition period. We have both wicks and tails. It can go either direction in a transition period. But notice how smooth and simple that was to just stay in those trades. Nike. Yeah, we talked about Nike several times yesterday as a possibility. What time frame are you talking about there, uh, Moto? There's the 15 minute on this. You can see there's a great 2 6 setup right here. Whoops. Stupid thing changed tools on me. 
Um, there's a great setup here. There's your entry into that hike and trade right there. Here's another entry over in here as we break out of that consolidation. If we look at the daily, there's the daily hike and ashy setup. You can see how it worked right here. Just place a price alert across this consolidation, enter that trade. It worked right here. We got our crossover, we got our pullback, set an alert on this trade, enter that trade. Winning positions. Very simple trade strategy, and everyone can um, easily follow it, I think, with a little bit of practice. Just a little bit of practice. Okay. Questions on this, guys? Um, yes, yeah, or so, so you can see it's a two, two exponential, six exponential, and that gets the better math uh, for the actual Heiken Ashi candles. Kind of helps. It, it it closely mimics the three eight then. Uh, for me, on the hike and ashy, remember, Valerie, the hike and ashy is an average of two periods. So if you're looking at a daily chart like this, it's two, basically two days averaged together. Okay? So you can even adjust that stop just a little bit tighter. But yes, I'm probably going to initially set my stop right here. And then I will aggressively move it up if my candle follows through to the upside. I will be moving that up aggressively then to follow that move. Yes, 1.35. On the standard chart, it's 1.50. 10 periods, 1.50. They're all exponential moving averages, Don. Yes. 15 minute, it doesn't matter. It, it translates to any time frame. Look at the 15 minute here. Do you see three eight or the two six traps setting up nice and clear? Dollar General yesterday. There was a lot of good looking trades moving along um, yesterday coming back up. Yes, this is High Kanashi. Okay. I honestly, I'll tell you honestly, guys, I didn't know there was as much of an interest in Heiken Ashi as there, there is. Um, I put out a Heiken Ashi video on YouTube. It's my biggest video on YouTube. Um, it's pushing 50,000 views now. Um, it's, it's like ranked number three or four in Heiken Ashi search on YouTube. Um, there is a huge interest in Heiken Ashi, and that's why I've spent so much time developing this strategy. 99.9% .9 of my time, Don, is I'm, I am a day chart swing trader. Okay. So if I were going to use Heiken Ashi for a standard swing trade, I'm probably going to use a four hour chart. Okay. Four hour chart is gonna mimic, closely mimic what you might see on the daily chart. Okay. I don't do the whole, I, I'm not a scalper. Don't wanna be, 
um, about as far down as I'm going to go is those 15 minute charts and I just don't mess with anything else. There's just too much noise in this market to really see a whole lot of future in that. And besides that, I can prove to you, I'll beat you to death with my returns trading longer term charts. You don't have to go down to that really micromanagement type time frame. Longer term trading, whether it be an hourly or a four hour or something like that, will typically, you'll typically see people outperform unless you're a really, really adept day trader. Outperform most day traders profit wise. So I usually don't dip down there. I prefer, my, my comfort zone is daily charts. Because to be honest, I'm lazy. I don't want to work that hard. I want to find trades, get in them and just follow them. I don't want to work that hard. If I can make these even longer term, I'll do that as well. I don't want to work that hard, and I'm t trust me on this. You'll make more money. Thanks, RC. Let me show you here a great short trade setup. I haven't spent much time on short trades. Great short trade setup was right here in shop. 3A trap, eight crosses down through the 17, three separates from the eight, we come back up. Here's our failure pattern right here. So you could enter this enter candle if you chose to, this is a daily. You could set an alert on this and try to catch into that trade to follow that trend down. That's a great three inch trap. There's a possibility of a, another failure pattern setting up right in here. We just need that bearish candle, right? That bearish candle to show itself and there's another short possibly setting, setting up there. And the only reason I would be looking at this as a possible short, I know there's a lot of folks out there that are cringing right now saying, I want shop to go up. The reason I'm looking at this as a possible short is because the setup is still short. It won't become long until we get that crossover, that pullback in buyers. Okay. But when you look at this chart, just over these periods right in here, look at these trades that could have been made. Three holds above the eight entry right in here three holds above the eight entry right in here right in here over and over right in here just follow a trending chart and take the money that's easy to grab as the stock trends in a direction and once we get out of this choppy mucky mess I won't be looking at short-term term charts much anymore. I'll be going back to more of my standard daily type trades because that's where the better money is for me and it's where I feel the most comfortable. Yep, reversion to the mean. Extend too far to the one side, bounce back and there's your short trade. And the three trap really lays that out for you very clearly. Okay. By the way, if just for you guys, um, if you take a look at the diamonds, what do you think is setting up in the diamonds here? Yeah, possible short. 
We'll know when it do is no longer a short when we break this downtrend. We cross up, we pull back and hold and buy or step in. That's when it's over. Like right here. Cross over, pull back, and it holds. That's when it was over. But we can see right in here how we can bounce right back up here, have these big bullish moves, and fail. Don't get fooled by that anymore. Use that 3-8 trap to show you that you're where you are in this trade. You're on the right side or the wrong side of the position. Okay. The same thing is true. Yeah, keep it simple. The same thing is true on the hiking, guys. Same thing is true. We need those crossovers. We need that hold. We get those crosses and those holds. Then we start looking for long trades. Don't be fooled by that, those moves like that and chase into that trade because that potential of failure is still very real here. Okay. So make that decision, guys. I really want to challenge everyone to just make that decision that you're in. And by the way, I'm going to say this. You don't have to like the 3-8 trap. I don't care if you do or not. I don't, I don't, if you, if you don't like the two six on the high cap, I don't care. But what you need to do is find that simple strategy that you can see readily in charts. And then commit yourself to a plan. I'm going to challenge everyone today to commit yourself to a plan. Don't go into another week of trading without a clear focused plan on how you're going to approach the market. With, with the coaching sessions and things that I've been doing with folks individually, we're taking people that have struggled for years and turning them in, into profitable traders in short periods of time because they're be getting committed to a simple plan. We don't have to be a hero. You don't have to know everything there is to know about the market. In fact, most of the time, that's just going to get in your way. Because we overanalyze and over scrutinize and all kinds of stuff rather than just trading what the chart tells us to trade. We can't outsmart the market. Okay? The market knows more than we do and it always will. We cannot outsmart it. We can't know what comes next. But we can do something simple, like just waiting for the buyers to, to show themselves and we follow them in the trade. It's not that hard to do. Give up that idea of prediction, predicting, get involved in a good solid plan and start building that confidence. Now I'm going to ask you one more thing in this challenge. I get people that I've worked with that have traded for a long time. And I tell them, if you want to commit yourself to this strategy, you need to practice. And I tell them, open up a paper account and practice. And they will say, come on, I've been trading for a long time. You mean I have to practice? The longer you've been trading, I'm going to tell you, you really need to practice. And the reason is, is because we develop so many bad habits over the years. We get accustomed to breaking our own rules. We jump around from strategy to strategy. We're all over the place. It's a mess. You need to build yourself a confidence that the trade strategy that you're working works. You see, I have no pride in the fact that I want to know every strategy in the market. None whatsoever. I don't care. Because my strategy works. I make money. I've made a career out of it. That's all I want to know. I want to be the very best I can at my strategy. Nothing else. I don't care what the president has to say. I don't care what 
Jim Cramer has to say, none of that matters to me. What matters to me is what is the chart showing me and am I following my rules to take advantage of that price action? So you need to practice it. Open up a paper trade account and run a bunch of numbers through there. Prove to yourself that this works. That helps you back away from that micromanagement. That helps you identify what your true risk tolerance is. It helps you identify how you can target profits in a trade and get comfortable with just taking those profits when they come. But you have to practice it. If you take this information here today and don't do anything with it, next week it's gone. You won't remember. Things will be missed. And you'll struggle to get back to it. Commit yourself to this planning and, and get working, or a plan, and get working on the details. Run through those numbers. Build that confidence. Hey, this works. You are not going to win every trade. Get that. Get comfortable with that right now. You're not going to win every trade. I know that from the second I enter every single trade that that trade could be a loser. And that's why I do my very best to make sure that I'm taking only quality trades. Only quality setups. If it's a sketchy setup, I'm not taking it. I don't want a loss. I want to win. So I'm picky about the trades I take. And commit yourself to that plan. And work through it. Because once you break those bad habits, once you build a confidence in a strategy, you can look at any chart, in any time frame, in any market, and see the opportunity that's there. Okay? Please commit yourself to that. Yeah, always, always, always record your trades. One of the things that I require of everyone that I coach is that they record their trades because we don't learn very much from reviewing our winning trades. We love to talk about our winning trades. Man, I made a bundle on this trade. Great. But you don't learn a lot from those. You learn a lot from the losing trades. And so you're losing trades. You need to be recording those just as diligently as anything else so that you can go back and review and you're looking for little tiny changes, mistakes. Like I told you that one trader. All of his losses that he'd had over that period of time were because he chased the crossover and didn't wait for the pullback. That's important information to know. And unless you record those that information and review those trades, you will never find that out. You know, wise man once said, just do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Right? So we've got to identify what's not working and stop doing it. Make sense? So, hey, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I, I am willing to stick around. I don't want to, but I don't want to beat this thing to death. I'm willing to stick around and ask questions. And I want to thank um, the Dallas Fort Worth Trading Group being here to get, today. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Does anybody need that link to my YouTube channel again? You can follow all of these videos. There's more than 600 videos on, on the YouTube channel now. This one will be on YouTube, yes. Um, I may get it posted this weekend. Okay. Any questions on this strategy, anything before we go? I just want to say thanks to everyone for being here. Uh, Rick P and the LTA scanner. Um, it's really simple. Um, 
in the LTA scanner, you just, instead of choosing day, you click four hour. That's going to require some writing code, Rick, for TC2000. And I'll, I'll tell you honestly, I'm just not doing it anymore. Um, um, I'm not writing the code. I'm not, and the reason is I've gotten lazy. LTA scanner just does it for me. So you'll probably have to do, go do a little research on that. Um, what I would recommend, a TC2000 is great. Go to warden.com. Log into their um, their chat. You know, if you go to um, here, I'll just show you guys. Warden.com. If you guys have never done this, go to Warden.com. Go to discussion right here. Click on discussion. Right in here, you have tons and tons. You can ask a TC2000 trainer. Tell them what you're trying to do, and they will write or help you write a scan. But besides that, there's tons. I mean, there's tons of free scans already in here. More than you could ever possibly need. But you just go in there and ask them, and they will help you put together a scan. Okay. So if you're wanting to stay specifically with TC2000 for that, then by all means, you know, get in there and ask and find out. That's how I do it. That's how I learned how to write the code for TC2000 is getting in there and working with those trainers on how to put things together. Okay. Uh, Malcolm, um, your question, TOS is now commission free. Yeah, the, um, the numbers that they are suggesting that they're going to lose on this situation are staggering um, because of their cut of commissions. My guess is, Malcolm, um, what we're probably going to see sometime in the near future um, these brokers are going to start charging for their tools. So, for example, I use Tradehawk. Tradehawk is, is no commissions, but I pay a monthly fee for the platform. Okay, and I would guess that's what these platforms are going to go to. Yep, they're probably going to go to a platform or a tool-based fee. The other thing that they're going to do is most of these brokers are... are One of the things that's been great about Thinkorswim is they would always route to the cheapest broker. They may no longer do that. Or cheapest market maker. They may route to the market maker where they have a deal with that they can collect a certain percentage on every transaction. So it may not be there. We may also have to watch really carefully the bid ass spreads. Okay, so I don't know how they're gonna make it up for sure, but trust me, they'll figure a way to charge you for that stuff. So my guess is some point in the future, the Thinkorswim platform is probably going to be a fee-based platform. Okay.
So we'll have to wait and see how all this is going to shake out. But Schwab's moves the other day really shook up the industry big time. And, you know, there's brokers out there that were already shaking that tree. Um, Tradier is the brokerage that I use the platform TradeHawk through. It's just kind of like Thinkorswim is the platform I use through TD Ameritrade. Um, Tradier is the brokerage, and they established some time ago, you know, for example, they went to what they, what they kind of call a Netflix strategy. If you're a stock only trader, you can trade as much stock as you want unlimited for $19 a month. 19 bucks a month. Doesn't matter how many trades you do, that's your flat fee. Okay. Uh, I disagree, Tim. If you trade if you trade a lot of contracts like I do, um, to give you an example, when I went from Thinkorswim to Tradehawk, and I pay a fee of $159 a month for the platform, but no commissions, I saved about $8,000 in commissions the first year. So paying for the tools can be much more affordable because when you start thinking about multiple contracts, Malcolm cut 2K out of his commissions, yeah. So it 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 require you know when you start trading multiple contract trades, you know even on Thinkorswim I had my my commissions down to fifty cents per contract. But if I traded a 50 contract iron condor, and folks in right way options have seen me do that, even at 50 cents a, a contract, that's an expensive trade. Okay, you do very much of that and pretty soon your, your commissions are huge. Okay, but with the Tradehawk platform and now with Thinkorswim, no commissions on that. Well, and see, that's the other thing, Tim. With, with, with Tradehawk, I pay no per contract fees. My fee, no matter how much I trade, is one hundred fifty-nine bucks. So I know what my input costs are from the beginning. Okay, so it, 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 you know, and I'm not trying to talk for either one, okay? Not trying to talk for either one. Well, it doesn't matter because there's no there's no order charges, Barry. It's it, literally with with TradeHawk, you can trade as many trades as you want for your. I can never go over. I, if I trade a hundred contracts this week or ten thousand contracts this week, my fee is the same. It never changes. Okay. So my guess is we're going to see Thinkorswim, Schwab, those kind of folks go to that kind of thinking. They're going to charge for their tools and their platform and eliminate their commission costs. Tradehawk is, I've had no problems with Tradehawk. Okay. But, you know, all of these brokers are going to do this. You know, once one starts, they're all going to go that direction. Okay. 
So just kind of keep that in mind. They're all going to go that direction. They're going to figure out some way to make money. They ha or they won't be in business. Okay, so they'll figure out some way to make money. And it's, like I said, I think it's going to be on their tools and things like that that they're going to charge for. Okay. All right, guys. Have an awesome weekend. Dallas-Fort Worth, folks, thanks for being here. Truly appreciate it. Hope to see you around the room here. Um over the next uh, few weeks. And um, if you guys have any questions or anything I can help with, please let me know. Go root for your root for your team. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning with the morning market prep video. I always have that out before the market opens. You'll find it on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys. Appreciate you more than you can possibly know. Have an awesome, awesome weekend.